So today um, we're we're converting special triangles to the unit circle, okay? And then learning how to use the unit circle. This morning we're going to learn it to find trig values, and this afternoon we're going to uh, use it to solve simple trig equations, okay? Um, so this morning we're learning to use the unit circle to find exact trig values. So recall the special triangles, the 45 degree sides were 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and R was 1. The 30 degree, the longer side is root 3 over 2, and the shorter one's 1 half, and that hypotenuse is 1. And the 60 degree is the reverse of that, the shorter side is 1 half. So those are our three special triangles that we made yesterday. You guys did a really great job with them, drawing them. Basically, the unit circle is just a memory need. So rather than draw your, your triangle at each time, you can use the unit circle as a reference. Okay, so that you don't have to make that diagram every time you want to try and find a secant of 560 or degrees. Okay, you can use your unit circle to do that. All right. Um, so the unit circle is a memory aid diagram that stores information about commonly referenced angles and trig. It uses symmetry and the special triangles to store information. So for instance, there'll be a spoke on your unit circle that represents 60 degrees. And it really, we, um, we're meaning to put this triangle in it, but we don't draw um, the verticals in because then it would look really confusing. But this ordered pair over here represents that the x value is a half and the y value to get up to this point on the edge is root 3 over 2. Okay? So we go over a half and up root 3 over 2 and then we get to this point that's 1 away. So it's a circle with a radius of 1. Okay? So the radius is always 1, which is what we did for our special triangles as well. Okay, so we're going to fill your unit circle in now. So I'm going to try to make mine smaller so that we can we can see what I'm doing better here. Nope, and I don't think I can do that. Okay. View. There should be like a view thing. So thank you. <laughs> nope, I don't want that much. You zoom. Yeah. Zoom. There, yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. So we're just start off with um. So start off just with your pencil. Okay, no color yet. And. This line here is the x-axis, okay? So off to the side here, just to make sure you remember that this is the x-axis. And this is up at the top, is our y-axis. Okay, so this is really an x-y-axis. So that point in the center there would be the point zero, zero. Does everyone see that where everything crosses? That would be the point zero, zero. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is the, these four points. So this is a circle with a radius of 1. So if I would want to know the coordinates of this point here that's right on the x-axis, what would the coordinates of that, oops, that point be? Close. So we go over 1 and up or down 0. So 1, 0, does that make sense? And then this point right here up at the top would have the coordinates 0, 1. So we don't go left or right, but we go up 1. And then this point over here at 180 degrees would have the coordinates negative 1, 0. And at the bottom, at 270 degrees, this point here would have the coordinates 0, negative 1. Okay? 
Now we're going to uh, just write the angles on each spoke. So, and don't leave them too near the side, so like to be them about here. So this is, this represents zero degrees. Okay. And at the top, that represents 90 degrees, just like yesterday. And at the left side, that represents 180 degrees. 270. And we know 0 and 360 are the same. So we're just going to go to 360. We're all going to find the critical angle when we're using a circle rather than putting positive and negative angles on it. Or not between 0 and 360. Okay, now we're going to do the 45s. Okay, so um, now we'll use a color. So get your first color out. And I'm going to color in our 45 spokes, I guess you want to call them, of the wheel. So they're always in the middle of each quadrant. The middle spoke in each quadrant. And then I want to write their angles on them. So the first one's easy, it's 45 degrees. get this angle, so I'm going to draw this in, but then I'm going to erase it. So really it's this angle that I'm looking at here, right? Which would be 180 minus 45. You want to apply that? So that gives you, so this one's 135 degrees. And then I'm just going to erase this. So that's down here. Okay. And then this green one here is going to be 180 plus 45, which is 225. So this angle here is 225 degrees. And this one's going to be 360 minus 45, which is 315 degrees. We also want to know what the ordered pair would be. So again, don't draw on the dotted line, but I'm going to, and then I'll erase it. So basically it's like we're fitting the 45 degree triangle, I can't go backwards because then the zoom will go away, but we're fitting this 45 degree triangle into our unit circle, okay? We're fitting it in. We know the radius is one, and we could draw on here that the radius is one, but if I want to know what the coordinates of this point would be, I would go over 1 over root 2 and up 1 over root 2. Okay, so from 0 to get to this point here, that's uh, on a circle of radius of 1, so the radius is 1, I would from 0, I would go over 1 over root 2 for my x and then up 1 over root 2 for my y. You have to figure following why that ordered pair is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Yeah? Okay. All right. So, in this quadrant, we're still going to have the same two sides for x and y, but the signs may be different. So, if I'm trying to get to this point from 0, I'm going to go in a negative x direction, 1 over root 2. But I'm going to go up, so my y is still going to be positive. One over root two. Okay. And then in the third quadrant, I can get there. 
So remember again, I'm starting from zero, and I want to go over and down to get to this point right here. So I want to go left, which is negative, and down. So the coordinates of this point are going to be negative 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. Both x and y are negative in the third point. And then to get the coordinates of this point from 0, I would go to the right 1 over root 2. So my x would be positive 1 over root 2. Then I'm going to go down. So my y would be negative 1 over root 2. Okay? All right, so make sure that makes sense in your head why we did that. And now we're going to do the 30 degrees. So you need a different color now. So we're going to do the 30 degrees. So the 30 degrees, 30 degrees from zero is our smallest one here. So that's 30 degrees. And then 30 degrees just before 180. So 30 degrees before 180 would be 180 minus 30, which is 150 degrees. Is everyone okay with that? And then 30 degrees more than 180, that would be 180 plus 30, would be 210 degrees. And then 30 degrees before 360. So 30 degrees before 360 would be 330 degrees. Do you see the symmetry there? If the circle, if I were to fold it in half right now over the y-axis, red would line up on red and green would line up on green. And if I were to fold it over the x-axis, red would line up on red and green would line up on green. Okay, so all the red angles are called related angles, and all the green angles are called related angles. Okay, um, now we want to know the ordered pairs. So, this is my 30 degree right triangle. So, remember the longer side is root 3 over 2, so it's longer in the x and shorter in the y. So the ordered pair would be root 3 over 2, then up 1 half. And then over in the second quadrant to get to 150, I'd have to go negative root 3 over 2, but then up 1 half to get to this point right here. And then for the 210, I would go negative root 3 over 2 and down 1 half. So the ordered pair would be negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to go over root 3 over 2, positive direction to the right, and then down 1 half. So negative one half. Okay? Okay. Twenty five? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and now we're gonna do the sixty degree triangles. So they're sixty degrees away from the x axis, all all four of them. So your third color
So then we're going to figure out the angles. So 60 degrees away from zero is the first one, 60. And the second quadrant, I would do uh, 180 minus 60, which is 120. In the third quadrant, I would do 180 plus 60, which is 240. And in the fourth quadrant, I would do 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. So you should be able to look around your circle now and see that every single spoke has an angle. So just make sure now that you're not missing any. Every single spoke on your wheel has an angle written down. Okay? Now we're going to fill the last few points in, or 60 degree points. So for our 60 degree triangle, remember this is a radius of one, so I would go over a half and up the higher one, up root three over two, to get to that point here. And then this one, I'm going to go left a half, so negative a half, but still up root three over two. And then in the third quadrant, I'm going to go left and down, so both negative, negative one half for the x, and negative root three over two for the y. And in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to go to the right, so positive one half, negative root three over two. So then you should be able to look around your circle and make sure every one of these points has an ordered pair with it. So every spoke should have an angle, every point on the edge should have an ordered pair. So you're not missing anything on your circle. So just check kind of spoke by spoke. Make sure you've got them and if you don't, copy it. Were you good? They got your unit circle? Okay, now some interesting things, so keep your unit circle out. On the unit circle, R is always equal to 1. Which has some consequences here, okay? So since sine theta is y over r, but r is 1, then on the unit circle, the sine of theta is just the y value, which is pretty cool. So for instance, if I wanted to know the sine of 240 degrees, you would just find the y value at 240 degrees, and it would be negative root 3 over 2. So the sine of 240 would be negative root 3 over 2, the y value. Okay? So every y value around here represents the sine. Similarly with cosine, it's x over r, but r is always 1. So on the unit circle, if I want to know the cosine of an angle, it's just the x value. So if I asked you for the cosine of 315, you would look and see what's the x value at 315. It's 1 over root 2, so the cos of 315 would be 1 over root 2, just the x value. Okay? Um, so when, uh, just a, another thing that's cool is if I want to find the cosecant of an angle, I can just do 1 over y, which is just flip the y value upside down. 
So rather than writing it out as a reciprocal, you can just flip the y value upside down. So that's like when we did our angles and quadrants. And say we were given the speak of something was 5 over 3 and we wanted to use the cast rule, we would immediately change that to the cos was 3 over 5. Do you remember doing that last time? Not last. Last time, last Friday. Okay? So we're using that kind of thinking here. If I want the cos can of something, I'm just going to flip the y value upside down. So, an example of that would be if I asked you for the cosecant of 120 degrees, you would find the y value, root 3 over 2, flip it upside down, 2 over root 3 would be the cosecant of 120 degrees. The y value flipped upside down. Okay? The same thing for seek. So, seek is going to be the x value flipped upside down. And then tan, tan you still have to do some work. It's going to be the y value in the ordered pair divided by the x value in the ordered pair. Still, so it doesn't really change. And same with cotan, it doesn't really change either. It's going to be the x value in the ordered pair divided by the y value in the ordered pair. Okay? So that's pretty much that's what you need to know in order to use the unit circle effectively to help you um, find trig values, which is what we're going to be doing. With. So have it out and ready, and we'll start practicing. We don't need these colors. No, you don't need your colors anymore. So, um, use the definitions of the primary and secondary trig ratios to determine trig values from the unit circle. Um, there's two ways to use it. We can use the unit circle to find exact trig values. That's what we're going to work on this morning, okay? Without using a calculator and without drawing the big diagrams, okay? We've already got our big diagram right here, and that's what we're going to use, okay? Um, so I have it in my head. Like I've been, I memorized the unit circle in high school, and then when I got to university, I knew it. So I could always just see how what the values were in my head. You can still do it, okay? It's like kind of just knowing your time tables. It's kind of I just know what things are, or I can at least look at my head and find it out, okay? It's if you're going to take calculus in first year university, it's worth memorizing the unit circle, okay? Um, there's lots of universities that don't even have calculator for first year, so. <laughs> Depending on what where which university you're at, you can't have one. So these these kind of memory tricks are helpful. All right, so use the unit circle to find the exact value of each of the following. So the cosine of 210. So we know that on the unit circle, cosine is the x value. So I'd go and look at my unit circle, find 210, find the x value, negative root 3 over 2. So, negative root 3 over 2. And remember yesterday, you can check that. You can find the cos of 210 as a decimal. Uh, negative 0 0.8660. And then you can find negative root 3 over 2 as a decimal. And it ends up the same. Okay? Sine of 330. So sine is y over r, but r is 1 on the unit circle, so it's just the y value. So we look at 330 degrees, find the y value, negative 1 half, and that's going to be the sine of 330 degrees. Cos of 495. So whenever we get a number bigger than 360 or a negative one, we always find a principal angle first. So our first step is to say the cos of 495 is going to be the same as the cos of 
So we find the principal angle. 495 minus 360 is 135 degrees, which is on our circle. So that would be mark one there, showing that you know it's the cos of 135. And now you're going to look up 135 degrees on your unit circle, and it's cos, so you're going to look at the x value. So x value at 135 is negative. And remember, you can always check them with your calculator. And if they disagree, so you might have actually been set and neglected the y value instead of the x value, you forgot to flip it, all that stuff, but you can always check your eight digital things. Seek of 120. So I should be looking, seek is related to cos, so I should be looking at the x value, but I should be flipping it upside down. I'm going to go look at 120. The x value is negative one half. If I flip that upside down, I get negative two over one, which is just negative two. Okay. And then remember, if I want to check that, I would do one divided by the cos of one twenty, and it should say negative two, and it does. Okay. Cos so can of negative 300. So our first step is to get it on the circle. So I'm going to do negative 300 degrees plus 360 to get the principal angle. And that's going to be 60 degrees. So the cosecant of negative 300 degrees is the same as the cosecant of 60 degrees. So then I'm going to cosecant related to sine. So I'm going to find the y value at 60 and flip it upside down. So 60, y value, flip it upside down, 2 over root 3. And again, I can check my answer. 1 divided by the sine of negative 300 gives me 1.1547. 2 divided by root 3, same thing. Okay. Cos of 450, so first step is to find the principal angle. Ninety. Oh, this is one that we didn't do with our special triangle, but we can do with our unit circle. So cos means I'm looking at my x value at 90, which is straight up here, the x value at 90 is 0. So the cos of 90 should be 0, and then you can check that easily on your calculator. Cos of 90, 0. Okay? Tan of 240 degrees. So that takes a little more work because I have to take the y value and divide by the x value. Okay? So I go to 240. The y value is negative root 3 over 2, and the x value is negative a half. So it's going to be negative root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. And we can do our little trick where they're both out of 2, so we can divide the 2s out. So we end up with negative root 3 divided by negative 1, which is positive root 3. And again, you can check that on your calculator. Tan of 240, 1.732, root 3, 1.732. Cotan of 150, so cotan is the x value divided by the y value. So I'm looking at 150 x divided by y. So negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half. So 2 is divided out. Negative root 3 divided by 1 is just negative root 3. Okay. Cos 
tangent of 405, so we're going to do 405 minus 360 to find the principal angle, is 45 degrees. So the tan of 405, your first step would be to say it's the same as the tan of 45 degrees. And then you're going to look up 45 degrees and divide the y value by the x value. And they're both the same. We're dividing a number by itself. So we get 1. Okay? And then you can check that tan 405 gives you 1. Check the answer. Sine squared 300 degrees plus cos squared 300 degrees. Okay, so first of all, I would rewrite this as sine of 300 degrees squared. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you too. Um, and then I would look up the sine of 300. So I'm looking at my unit circle for the y value at 300 degrees and that negative root 3 over 2. So I'm going to replace sine of 300 with negative root 3 over 2, but that's still being squared. And then I'm looking on my unit circle for the cosine of 300 degrees, which is positive 1 half squared. And then you have to remember when you square a fraction, you apply this one to the top and the bottom. So this is going to be negative root 3 squared over 2 squared plus 1 squared over 2 squared. You can skip that step if you want. Just trying to be thorough. So negative root 3 times itself is 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 4 fourths, which is 1. Now what's special about this? Sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of an angle equals 1. That's the identity, right? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So if both these angles are the same, you should get 1 when you calculate it. Okay, because that's the identity. Sine squared theta from when we get identities on Monday, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 is our most famous identity. If the angles are different, it won't work, but if they're the same as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so uh, next one, 2 times the sine of 210 times the cos of 210. So that's really three things multiplying together. So 2 stays up front. Then I'm going to replace sine of 210 with a value, and I'm going to replace cos of 210 with a value. So the sine of 210, I'm going to look up 210 on my unit circle, look for its y value, and it's negative 1 half. Then I'm going to look up the cos of 210 on my unit circle, and then I'm looking for x value, which is negative root 3 over 2. So I'm really multiplying these three numbers together. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together and the denominators together, and then reduce. So if I multiply the numerators together, I'm going to get positive 2 root 3. And if I multiply the denominators together, I'm going to get 4. But I can divide top and bottom by 2 because 2 and 4 reduce. So I end up getting root 3 over 2. And we can check that one. So let's check 2 times the sine of 210 degrees times the cos of 210 degrees, 0.866, 0.25, and root 3, 
divided by two, so I memorize that also. Okay, um, all right, try L. So cosecant of 60 and sine of 60 would be root 3 over 2, so the cosecant would be 2 over root 3. And so we got 2 over root 3 for the cosecant of 60. Yes, good. Okay, seek of 60, so the cos of 60 would be a half, so the seek would be 2, or 2 over 1. Did we get that? Okay, no problem. All right, and then we're going to multiply these three numbers together. So top together, they're all 2s, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, over root 3. Eight over root 3. Okay, and then you can try it out by doing 2 times 1 over sine of 60 times 1 over cos of 60, and then make sure you get 8 over root 3. Okay? All right, tan squared of 510. Okay, so I'm going to write it as tan of 510 squared plus 1. Then I'm going to find out the principal angle of 510 by subtracting 360. And that gives me 150. And then to get tan, so I'm looking at 150 on my unit circle, and it's the y value at 150 which is a half, divided by the x value at 150, which is negative root 3 over 2. And then that's all being squared. So, we have our little trick here where we can divide the 2's out. So the tan of 150 is really going to be negative 1 over root 3. And then I'm still squaring that. Kind of blend it into my 2 here. Okay, so here's my square. So square the top, negative 1 squared is 1, square the bottom, root 3 squared is 3. How do I add a fraction and a whole number? Yep. Find the common denominator. So if I make this out of 3, the top becomes 3 as well. 1 and 3 over 3 are the same. So I end up getting... 4 over 3. Now you should be able to just try that on your calculator now. So try tan of 510 and then press equals, then square that. Press equals and then add 1. And I get 1.33333. Repeat, which is the same as 4 divided by 3. Okay? All right, so this is a, wants the seek of 210 divided by the cosecant of 210. So try that one. Seek of 210 divided by cosecant.
So if you're looking at 210, uh, secant is related to cos, so I'm going to look at the x value. It's negative root 3 over 2, so I'm going to flip it so that v is the same. Seek of 210 is the same as negative 2 over root 3. Divided by the cosecant of 210, so the sine of 210 is negative a half. So the cosecant is going to be negative 2. So that v is the same. Okay, you can have negative 2 over 1 if you want as well. Everybody so far so good? Okay. And then this is a divide sign. So we know that dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1 half. Okay. So I'm flipping negative 2 upside down. Multiply the tops together. Multiply the bottoms together. And then you can reduce, but be careful when you reduce that there's still a 1 on top. That's the biggest mistake people make on this one, is they just say the answer is root 3. It's not as 1 over root 3. And again, you can always check your answers on your calculator to make sure that you calculate the right So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 root 3 divided by 2 is root 3. 1 over root 3. Okay, the sine of negative 90, so I'd first do negative 90 plus 360, which is 270, so that's the same as the sine of 270. Then I know sine is the y value, so I'm looking at 270, which is at the bottom. The y value is negative 1. Try it on your calculator. Sine of 270, negative 1. Cos of 180, so I'm looking at the 180 angle for the x value because it's cos. x value at 180 is negative 1, good. You can try it on your calculator and it should tell you negative 1 as well. And then the last one is going to have some crazy looking fractions. I'm going to make big brackets here. And the first step. So the tan of 330, so I look up 330, I need the y value, which is negative 1 half, divided by the x value, which is root 3 over 2. Still looking at 330, but this time I'm dividing the x value, which is root 3 over 2, by the y value, which is negative 1 half. They're both out of 2, so I can do that much. So my next step down is going to be negative 1 over root 3 times negative root 3 over 1. Which gives me positive root 3 over root 3, which gives me an answer of 1. Why does it make sense that when you multiply the tan of an angle by the cotan of the same angle, you would get 1? From identities, the tan is 1 over the cotan. So if I rewrote this as tan of 330, times 1 over, oh, can't it on If I had rewritten this as tan of 330 times 1 over tan of 330 using the identity, if I multiply these together without even figuring out the tan, I would get tan of 330 over tan of 330. Anything divided by itself is 1. Okay, so it makes sense for the answer to be 1. We can work it out. 
But because tan and cotan are reciprocal and we're talking about the same angle, that only works if you're talking about the same angle and shared the angle through one. Okay? All right.